Hi everybody, Chef AJ here with my rescued dog, Bailey, and I'm the author of a book called Unprocessed. And today I would like to show you some of my very favorite unprocessed recipes. We're going to make a complete meal from soup to nuts. Well, actually there's not going to be any nuts and uh, there's not going to be any soup. That's an expression. We are going to have for an appetizer some cheese and crackers. It's going to be completely dairy-free, vegan, whole food, plant-based, without sugar, oil, and salt, and flour for that matter. And this is a great dish to serve for company. People will really like it, especially people that are trying to get off dairy products. For our entree, we're gonna make Mexican lasagna, one of the very first recipes I ever created as a teenager. The side dish is gonna be smoked artichokes, and for dessert, a four-layer ice cream cake. So, let's get started. Let's get started, All yes. Right. Can't wait to taste everyone. Ah, that Gustavo is a very good taster. Mm -hmm. So I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I really recommend that if you don't have an oven thermometer, please get one. They're about $10, and even if you have a brand new oven, I used to be an apartment manager, I can't tell you that they're not often accurate, and that's going to make a difference in every recipe, especially if you're baking. So I know that for my oven, 350 is 375, so my oven is preheated to 350. Always important to read a recipe first, and do what's called your mise en place, where all your ingredients are in one place and all your pans. Otherwise, it takes a lot longer to create any recipe. So always read it through, through at least one time. Make sure your oven's preheated. Mine is. Now, this calls for a 9 by 13 inch pan, which for some reason I can't find, but that's okay. I'm just going to use a smaller pan and cut the recipe in half, which you can too. Generally, I like doubling recipes because I like having leftovers so that I have things to freeze when I need to grab a quick meal. So I'm going to tell you how I created this recipe, but first I want to get it started. So I'm going to be using this smaller pan, which I figure is probably about half the size of a 13 by 9 inch pan or 9 by 13 inch pan. So one of the things we are using is pico de gallo salsa. And truthfully, you could use any salsa you want. This is the homemade salsa from my book on process on page 149. I did show you how to make this in several YouTubes, which is why I'm not making it right now. And please feel free to use your favorite jarred salsa. Always look for one without sugar or oil. It's kind of hard to find one without salt. There is one brand now at Trader Joe's without salt, but it has sugar. So we don't grease the pan. We don't use any oil. What we're going to do is we're going to take half the salsa that I have here which just cover the bottom of the pan. Again, this is, if you want to follow along, this is on page 106 of my book, Unprocessed. And then I am going to use some gluten-free, no-boil rice lasagna noodles. Now, if you're following the Ultimate Weight Loss Program or you don't want to use noodles, I'm going to give you two options in just a second. But first, I just want to get these in the pan. I'm making the recipe as I created it when I was a teenager. We used to have a store here called Fedco, which is sort of like Costco is today. And we used to go there. That's where I used to get my prescription glasses where I, when I wore glasses. And they had a big deli there. And they had this recipe called Mexican lasagna. But, of course, it had cheese and meat. And I thought, you know, I can do this because I, I you know, became vegan very young when I was 17, but I was always interested in cooking and healthy eating even before then. And so I made this recipe up. And it's actually quite, pretty easy because you probably have most of these ingredients either in your pantry or available to you. So I have one layer of noodles. And again, when you do the 9 by 13 inch pan, it's perfect. You don't have to break the noodles. But I didn't have it, so oh well. I'm not going to go to the store right now to get one. So I have in this bowl, I have some refried beans. Now these are canned. And so yes, they do have salt because the ones without salt had oil. Oil, and if it's cross between choosing oil and salt, I'm going to choose never going to choose oil. So they do have low sodium ones, but I couldn't find the low sodium ones without oil. So I'm going to add some organic roasted fire roasted corn, and it's from Whole Foods. I do recommend that if you do eat corn, that you always make sure it's organic because corn is the most heavily genetically modified crop. Corn, soy, and wheat are the three most heavily. And I'm just mixing in the corn and the beans. And of course, you can make refried beans from scratch, but I want to just show you a, a recipe that's so easy that you can pretty much find everything at Trader Joe's except for the rice noodles. Of course, if you don't live in California, that's not going to help, or someplace that doesn't have a Trader Joe's. But these are very easy to find ingredients. And if you didn't want to use the noodles, you could use corn tortillas. And if you didn't want to use that, you could even use very thin slices of potatoes or sweet potatoes. I've done that, but you have to make sure that if you do that, you get a very good mandolin because in order for it to cook in the 30 minutes that this recipe takes, 
it has to be pretty much paper thin. You would not be able to cut it that thin with a knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of the corn and bean mixture and place it on top of my noodles. Just like that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to show people one more time the box of the noodles. Well, this is just a really, really hearty dish. I bet Dr. McDougall would like it. I know he oh, really, yeah. really likes Mexican food and Lasagna Mary cooks yeah. a lot of beans. So basically, it's the idea of a lasagna, but instead of using marinara sauce and, and other ingredients, we're using Mexican ingredients. So we're just going to so just use it. So really, the, you, you're not putting any uh, spaghetti sauce. No, the, 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 the salsa, the, the is, salsa it takes is, place is. with the, the spaghetti sauce. So now I'm just going to do another layer. And again, as I said, you don't have to use noodles. You could easily use corn tortillas or very thin slices of potatoes or sweet potatoes. But the idea is, is a, traditionally a lasagna has noodles. Now, I never thought about doing this with vegetables. You might be able to very Maybe thinly slice eggplant? Yeah, eggplant or zucchini. I just haven't oh. thought about it, but I could, I could think about it for next time. And this is a very filling. I mean, we've got the starch from the corn which is a whole grain. We've got the starch from the beans, which is a legume. We've got the pasta, and it's just very filling, very flavorful, very easy, especially if you have unexpected company. I would have been better if I had my bigger pan, but this is still going to be absolutely delicious. Just push everything in like that. And again, feel free to use store-bought salsa if you don't want to make my recipe. And now the third layer of noodles. So I used maybe, a, I don't know, what did I use? Maybe nine noodles. And this is going to feed, I mean, well, the way we eat is going to feed four, but regular people, maybe even six maybe or eight. Six, yeah, yeah. Regu you know, regular regular people, <laughs> people that don't, <laughs> don't follow this way of eating. So again, you know, you can break these and it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. The idea is though, whenever you're using these no boil noodles, because boil noodles are a pain in the butt, yes. you have to make sure that they're covered. So remember, we started with oh. the salsa on the bottom and we add the salsa on the top. Now, when this comes out of the oven in 30 minutes, I'll show it to you. The noodles should be nice and soft, providing they've been covered. And then when we eat it, we can garnish it with things like the olives, which I don't have right now. We could garnish it with things like some scallions, which I do have. If you have guacamole or guacamole made from peas, you can put on top. But right now, we are going to put this in this preheated oven. So it is uncovered. important to... Uh, oh, yeah, you've got cover. to cover those noodles. If that noodle doesn't have wet, you're going to have a crunchy noodle. And nobody right. likes a crunchy noodle. I thought you meant covering the whole thing. No, no. no. We're, going to, if it's, we're not going to cover it. We're going to stick it in the center of this preheated oven, and I am going to set my timer for 30 minutes, and then we're going to move on to the next recipe. So the next recipe is what I call smoked artichokes. They're not smoked in the traditional sense because I don't have a smoker, but they have a smoky flavor. Artichokes are probably my favorite vegetable, and I will eat two, three, four of them in a day. They're 25 calories, and they're quite delicious. I personally don't need any sauce on them because they're so good, but I found that if I season the water and give us this smoky flavor. Even people that need sauces find that it tastes really, really good. It just adds a new dimension and depth of flavor. This is the reason that I prefer the eight quart instant pot to the six quart. Now, if you already have a six quart, don't get rid of it because you need more than one. But if you haven't gotten an Instant Pot yet, consider getting the eight quart. You can still use my name, AJ, not Chef AJ, just AJ, when you check out on the coupon code for a $50 discount. The thing I love about the eight quart is because you can make more food, but it's the only way I can cook four artichokes at a time. Unfortunately, the six quart, you can only get about two in. The eight quart, I can get four artichokes in at a time. And it's so much easier than boiling the water on the stove. It takes almost an hour. So I have four artichokes. I always take the, the biggest ones I can find, and I don't bother cutting the top off. I just cut this part off. You can't eat this part anywhere. This can go into your scrap bag. And I don't even use the rack because that's going to take up too much room. I do this at least a couple times a week, and I just stick them in. And like I said, with the six quart, you're lucky if you can get two in. But with the eight quart, look at that. Three already went in the bottom perfectly. And the fourth one is just going to sit on top, just like that. 
So there's no liquid inside. Oh right? no, there's going to be liquid. Oh, That's okay. one thing, guys. You have to have some kind of liquid right. to pressure cook. Right. Now, so what I'm going to do is I have this wonderful little thing that makes tea very quickly that Linda Middlesworth, the owner of V-Dog, gave me for my birthday. And so if you start with hot or boiling water, it's going to go faster. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be putting two cups. This is hot water uh, on the bottom. You always have to pressure cook. You have to have at least a half a cup of water. That's what we use to make our greens in the morning is a half a cup of water. So I am putting in two cups of water. But what is going to make it smoky is I am seasoning the water. And believe it or not, this really works. So mm -hmm. I'm taking one teaspoon of my favorite spice, smoked paprika, right in the water. I probably could have mixed it in. And I am taking a heaping eighth of a teaspoon of chipotle powder. So that almost is a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm putting it right in the water. By, and by doing that, it just, I don't know what it does, but the, it just mm. does something that it tastes amazing. Now, it's it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm it, but it just gives it this nice li little smoky note. So always go at about 11 o'clock, you close it, you push the manual button 10 minutes, and very soon we mm -hmm. are going to have our smoked artichokes. So now I'm going to show you how I make my own hibiscus tea every day so that I can drink iced hibiscus tea very inexpensively without having to buy the bags and have the packaging that I was doing before I realized how easy it was. So it's really inexpensive to buy the flowers or whatever you want to call it for the hibiscus tea. Almost every ethnic market, especially Asian markets, will have it. These things smell amazing. And I really don't even measure. I basically take a container like this that I filled with water. There's about 24 ounces of water in here. Or I use my aqua zinger, which is a diffuser that Sharon McRae gave me where you can put like fruit or herbs like mint on the bottom, pineapple, basil, have delicious flavored water. But you could just get a regular thing. And then I, I don't even measure. I mean, I'm guessing it's about a tablespoon. I just kind of grab about this much and I just put it in, maybe a little more depending on how strong you want it. And then I just leave it on the counter or in the refrigerator overnight. And this makes two servings for me. It makes exactly 24 ounces of tea. And then I strain it just with a regular strainer. And then I split this over two servings of six ounce, uh, 24 ounces. So it's 12 ounces each. But then I add another 12 ounces of water because this is really, really strong. And but this water is cold or hot? This is room temperature right now. Room but this will go in the refrigerator. But that's it, guys. It's okay. so easy. And, you know, um, when you're not having sugar, hibiscus tea tastes amazing, unsweetened. Um, if you're used to eating a lot of sugar, then you may not like it. But it's really good for you. It's supposed to help with inflammation. I know Dr. Greger recommends it. And it's so much less expensive when you buy it in bulk than when you buy tea bags. Okay, so now the very first layer of the four-layer ice cream cake. This is not my recipe. I always give credit where credit is due. And... I first tasted this at the home of Darshana Thacker. She is a wonderful chef that works for Forks Over Knives. It creates their meal plans and that created their wonderful salad dressings and wrote the recipes for most of their cookbooks. And this was a birthday party for the executive producer of Ryan Wendell, Forks Over Knives. It was a four layer cake made with the fruit, the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. The only problem is it's very easy to make, but you have to wait each layer, you have to wait in between for each layer to freeze because you can't just pour well you could but then it's not going to look so pretty like hers did so the first layer cherry is one of my favorite fruits so the first layer is cherry i'm using a vitamix and i might decide to use a champion juicer for some of the other layers uh, i know that not everybody has a vitamix but if you're trying to make thick sorbets it really can't be beat the vitamix the blend tech or the champion juicer or one of those uh, powerful machines you're going to need what we call a springform pan, and this is actually a silicone one that I love. And the sides come off, so this is what we're going to use. This is the best thing that I know of for this type of a recipe. You do need usually a little liquid in your blender to get frozen fruits to blend. The idea is as little as possible, so I am using unsweetened almond milk. I have two recipes in a process how to make it if you don't want to use box. So I'm just covering the blade. That's about a half a cup of fruit. And then to that, I'm adding a little bit of a secret ingredient that gives it this really beautiful red color, but actually adds a lot of nutrition. I'm not really into supplements, but I love the taste of this. This is called Beet Boost. And again, a lot of the Olympic athletes use this. It's supposed to be good for your muscles and inflammation. I'm just using it because I really like the taste. All it is is something like 
six, the equivalent of six beets and 35 tart cherries in this little powder that you can add to water, but it tastes really good in this sorbet, and I actually make beetsicles out of it. If you don't need it, I just like it, and if you want a discount code, it's JP16, that's my partner, John Pierre. You don't need it, but it just makes it so red and so yummy. So I'm adding that, and again, you can use any fruits you want for the layers, but if you want them to look pretty, you might want to go dark white, dark white. And then my fruit, which is two cups of organic frozen cherries and one banana that has been frozen after it was very ripe. That's really the secret if you're not using sugars to make sure your fruits are ripe, especially the bananas. So I'm just going to process this. Gustavo, see, oh. see if you like that flavor. I just Let's think see. it's delicious. I love it. Just got a nice mm. flavor. It really does. It adds. It just little, adds something. Add, yeah. So Ooh. this is what might be the reason you want to get a Vitamix oh. because <laughs> you probably Ooh, couldn't do that with a twenty. Nervous. You can't do that. Look. <laughs> Look, uh, you probably couldn't do that. I could hold it here all day. You probably couldn't do that with a twenty dollar blender. No. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this out, and this is going to be my first layer, or it could be my fourth layer, depending on which way you look at it. So I want to get this out. And again, it does, you know, it, it can be as much or as little fruit as you want. I just, I'm making thin layers that are very colorful. And depending on how cold your freezer is or how much liquid you've added, ideally you want to add no liquid or use the champion juicer because then it will take less time to freeze but this is one of those things that's not going to be ready in 10 minutes you have to plan and i love this little tool this is called an offset spatula and we are just going to press this i know this i around. keep i keep wanting to get one and oh, i forget we'll get you one while you're here it's just there's you can even get them at, at walmart seriously so what is it called an offset spatula off, it's just going off to offset spatula so what I want to make sure, though, is I don't want to get it too up, too high up on the sides because then it will affect how it looks when it freezes. We don't want to, because if the next layer is yellow, we don't want to get red. Enough. So you can always just take a little bit of a paper towel and clean up a little bit if anything got up higher like that. But it's just so delicious. And you can garnish this with fruit when it's done. So there we go. Now we have to pop this in the freezer and get this first layer to set up before we put the next layer on top. So now I'm going to show you one of my favorite appetizers, cheese and crackers. Now this is not my cheese recipe. It's a recipe of Anya Cass from Australia. Her blog is called Cooking with Plants and she's given me permission to demonstrate her recipe because what we want to do is show you that you can take a recipe that has salt and make it salt free with just a few little tweaks which I'm going to show you. But make sure you go to Cooking with Plants to look up this recipe. And the recipe is called smoked paprika cheese. So I'm following her recipe exactly, except for taking out the salt. I'm going to tell you what I did to make it just as delicious without salt. So we have some water in the blender, and then we're going to add the oats. Again, you'll get this recipe on her blog, Cooking with Plants. We're going to add some oats. Those were, were not quick oats, were they? Right? Correct. They were rolled oats. We're going to add some cooked sweet potato. Now, the recipe calls for a roasted bell pepper, which I just buy in a jar and I rinse off the salt because I don't have a gas oven. Nutritional yeast, I'm using unfortified. Spices, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, how this is the only thing I changed in her recipe. Lemon juice, and then more water. She has a particular way of recommending you do this recipe, so I do follow it exactly, except for the salt, which I don't add tell you in one sec what I did instead and I'm just going to Now this would be a delicious cheese sauce on its own right now that you could put over potatoes or broccoli and if you let it run in the blender it would be hot but 
this is a little bit different because this is a sliceable, meltable cheese. And what I love about your recipe, Anya, is that you don't use oil and you don't use nuts because so many of the cheese recipes are so full of fat with oil and nuts and you're not using either. But what we are going to do to thicken it up is use something called agar powder. And right here I have my agar powder and my water and I'm going to turn this on to high and I'm going to bring it to a boil. And then I'm going to stir it. And when it starts to get thick, I'm going to add it back into the blender. Now again, if you just are using this for cheese sauce, then this is it. You don't need to add anything else. So her recipe called for two and a half teaspoons of salt, which I think, well, I think any salt is too much salt. So I didn't use it. So you can't just take salt out of a recipe and expect it to taste good, especially a cheese recipe, because what people love about cheese is basically it's fat and salt. This recipe is doesn't have fat. It's very low fat. So instead of the two and a half teaspoons of salt, I used two teaspoons of my favorite salt-free seasoning which to me tastes very salty Benson's table tasty you can get this at www.bensonsgourmetseasonings.com 10% off with code chef AJ what I love about this is it's black pepper free I am allergic to black pepper it's also garlic free if that's an issue for you and it really does taste salty she's really a magician with this and if you want to meet her in person please come to the live ultimate weight loss conference Gustavo is going to be there and so is Dr. Lyle and Dr. McDougall, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at the Tuscany Hotel and Resorts. And you can try all of her seasonings as well as all of the vinegars from the Bima and Pa Vinegar Company. Chef Terry will have them there as well. So I use two teaspoons instead of two and a half teaspoons of salt. And again, if you have a salt-free seasoning you prefer, please use that. And if you use salt, you can always use that. But even so, without the salt, with the Benson's, it still was a little bit flat. So what I did, my tweak, was I added a half a teaspoon of chipotle powder, which chipotles are smoked jalapenos, and it just gave it that little oomph. Like, I find that whenever you use smoked paprika, which is in this recipe, if you use chipotle powder, that really does make a difference. Now, what I'm going to do is, once I get this done, I'm going to put it, I love hearts, uh, so I have these in other shapes, flowers as well. These are silicone baking pans. We're not going to bake this, but we're going to pour this in that, and Really, in no time, this is going to gel up, thicken up, and I'm going to show you how I serve it. So I'm going to make these little hearts, and I'm going to slice them in three slices and have little heart-shaped cheese slices, which are tasty and delicious. And I've given this to regular people, and they've really liked it. So over here, I'm just waiting for the water to boil. You know what they say, a watch pot never boils. So I'm just stirring in the agar powder to the water. I probably should have started How with hot water. How do you spell that? Oh, agar. A-G-A-R. So many people have heard of something called agar flakes. Agar is basically a sea vegetable and it's used in a thickener. And it's generally used as a thickener when we're doing like like raw desserts, not, not so much like when we're doing gravies, but that's we often see it in raw desserts, agar. And it just works great in this recipe. I, I don't know if, you, if your camera can pick that up, Gustavo, but it's already starting to thicken a little, and mm -hmm. it's going to thicken a lot. And once it thickens a lot, I'm going to put it in the blender, and that is what's going to make it thick in the refrigerator. If you just were to pour this in the molds now, it would not thicken up. So this is a great trick so that you're not having to use things like nuts to thicken it. And it does take a few minutes, and again, I could have started there, with more. Is there but. anything else that people can use to thicken it that you know? Well, not that I know, because, you know, the, the traditional thickeners when you're using, like, if you're making a gravy, for example, like uh, one of Mary McDougall's recipes, right. or wonderful golden gravy, generally what people use is a couple of tablespoons of flour. A lot of times people use arrowroot as a thickener, but for, even though this isn't a dessert, but this is sort of an uncooked recipe, you generally don't flowers generally don't work. So think, you know, nuts thicken things, but we don't want to use though that in this recipe because that would defeat the purpose of it being low fat. I know for when I'm doing things like gravies, I find that if you just take about a four ounce Yukon gold potato that's been oh, steamed, yeah. that can really thicken up a gravy, as can some cannellini beans, some white beans. So those are wonderful alternatives. But you know what they say, a wash pot never boils, but this is going to thicken up. So you can see, ooh, it's coming to a nice big rolling boil. So now I'm going to turn it down because I don't want it to boil over. There we go. So it's going to get nice and thick, sort of like the consistency of maybe molasses is what we want. And we just cook it for a few minutes after it reaches that boil. Just turning it down now. You can see that it, well, I hope that you can see the start. You can keep, see how much slower it's going on the, on the uh, spatula. So it's starting to get thick. Oh. 
and I think that looks just about right. I mean, we could go a little bit longer, but yeah, I'm going to say this is going to be fine. And now I'm going to pour it carefully. You always be very careful with hot things in a blender into the blender. Because once you have a closed mm -hmm. unit, then I'm going to stand back and make sure it's on low to start. And then slowly take it off. Sometimes sticks to your pot, so get it in water right away. And I'm going to take my molds, and again, you can use anything you want for this. It doesn't have to be this type of mold. I have stars. It just depends what I'm doing. But ooh, be careful, very hot. And then you carefully. And actually, this makes sliceable cheese. So if you made like oh. a like a bean burger, and maybe not in this shape, it would be great. So I'm just going to pour it in carefully. This is such a cool recipe. Every time I serve this, people ask for it. So I refer them to cooking with plants. She has other great recipes as well. This is just one that I make regularly, especially if I'm having company. Because it looks like cheese, it tastes like cheese. And of course you can vary the spices. I mean, you know, this is a smoked paprika cheese. I made it a little bit southwestern with the chipotle. But you can always put your own spin on things. You could put pimentos in there, you know, and that would look really pretty as it cooled. Stir those in. And I think this is going to take probably two of them. So this makes quite a bit, and I cut each heart in three uh, into three slices. Oh. Because I'm serving it on a cracker, I don't want it just this huge hunk of cheese, you know. There we go. You know, there's a few steps. It's not as complicated as it looks, you know, as long as you get everything out in front of you. Oh, it smell. Can you smell the paprika though, Gustavo? Yes, it my God. It smells so good. Yeah, it smells great. There we go. So that's right there. It's a good thing I have another. And I don't know if you can see, but just the, the pieces that have already, look at this. You can see <laughs> oh, that it already, that. it's wow. already gelled. I wow. mean, look at this. The ones, it's already gelled. But we're going to stick it in the fridge though, before we cut it. Fast. It is really fast. That's how quickly the agar works. Okay. And you're going to put it in the refrigerator? Yes, because then it's going to set up even faster. I think you could just do it on the counter, actually. Um, let's just see what does she say. Yeah. And she says refrigerator 30 minutes. I don't think it even takes that long, oh, to be no. honest. Because it's already, you can see, the, the things where I've been messy, it, it's already, you know, cheese. Wow. And you, you really can shred can this it. cheese. What's really cool is you can actually shred this. And, you know, I mean, I'm so glad that people aren't eating dairy and animals, but so many of the fake cheeses have just a yeah, lot of chemicals. Right. And this is this is all natural ingredients. So I'm going to put this in the fridge. But before I do that, I just want to show you that the artichokes were ready actually 19 minutes ago, according to the pressure cooker. And if I was paying attention, what I would have done is, because the pressure has already been released, I'm going to unplug it, and the reason I'm going to unplug it is I'm not ready to eat these. And by unplugging it, it's not going to continue to cook, but it's going to stay warm until we're ready to eat dinner tonight, and it's going to infuse that smoky flavor mm -hmm. even more, and it's mm. going to be absolutely delicious. And these are delicious cold as well, but for the first time, I like to eat them warm. Yeah. Now, let me just show you what's going on in the oven. We have our lasagna, and just know that everybody's oven is different. And depending on what pan you use, a, a more shallow pan cooks quicker than this fat thick pan. And so you can always add a little bit more salsa on top if you feel the noodle hasn't cooked. But I can, I can feel that the noodle is still a little bit hard there. You can see the beans are kind of starting to squirt up out of the other layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it for about 15 minutes longer so that those noodles get softer. And... Realize if you did use a corn tortilla for this, this would not you would not have to worry about that because they, they are already soft and they would melt into it. But you can see I'm already starting to be able to cut it, right. but it's still a little bit too hard. So maybe 30 minutes isn't going to be enough for a pan that's this deep. So it might need 45. I might even need an hour. So mm -hmm. come back. You just have to check. and You just have to check. Yeah. Yep. And you might have to add more salsa. So 
I'm going to put this in the fridge and then we're going to come back and do another layer of the ice cream cake. All right. So here's the first layer we made and you can see that it, uh, you know, it's not frozen solid, but you can see that it's not liquidy at all anymore. And I'm just smoothing it out a little bit more with my offset spatula. That's only because then when we cut it, it'll look prettier. And this took about 30 minutes in my freezer to get to the point where I could put the next layer on. So this is not a quick dessert, but it is a very easy dessert, I'll tell you that. And it's probably the healthiest dessert you could eat because it's made from the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. So now it's the choice of yours what fruits you want to use. So for the next layer, I'm doing pineapple, two cups. I always add a banana in for sweetness, a very ripe banana. And I find, oops, that's our oven, that's a lasagna, we'll check in a minute. I find that if I don't put a little bit of almond milk in, I just can't get it to process. But I think that that's also what Darshana says is contributing to the iciness of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more like a sorbet than a creamy, you know, full fat ice cream. So here we to taste no, this time. Well, look at this, guys. I mean, this oh could be your God. dessert every night for dinner. Wow. And this is delicious just on look its own. That. And you can always put some fresh fruit on top. I love fresh blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries on top of my sorbet. And again, you know, um, if you can't have bananas for whatever reason, you don't have to use them. But I do find that um, they do tend to make it sweeter unless your fruit is very, very sweet. So I wanted to do a mango layer, but I don't have one. So today we're not going to have one. And also the thicker it is when it comes out of the Vitamix, the, the quicker it's going to take for that layer to, you know, freeze up. That's why if you have the champion juicer, that might be the way to go. Oh, this smells good like a pina colada. Oh. I bet I can try that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. I love the Vitamix uh, because of the tamper, but it is harder to get it the last bit out. Get. Whereas the Blendtec, which is square, which I also have, it, it doesn't have the tamper, but boy, the shape makes it easier. But it's good for Gustavo that I'm not getting this that's all. That's right. Now, these are very thin layers, and that's because that's the only way I'll be able to get four colors to fit. If you have a bigger spring form pan, then it will be fine. Ooh, looks like there's a big chunk of banana. banana there. I'm going to put it back, let Gustavo have that. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're doing the layer, you want to do light, dark, light, dark. In my opinion, that looks the prettiest. Mango would have been very pretty because of the orange, but I'm going to, I have a couple pieces left in my freezer from the last one we made. And so I will show you what that looks like. But again, you just look how nice and thick this one. This is so thick, honestly, yeah. that we aren't going to have to wait a long time to put the next layer on. But we do need to move on to uh, the cracker recipe and the lasagna. So we are going to come back in just a moment. But again, the thin, the, that's why I like the offset spatula because I don't, I can get it nice and smooth and go all the way around. It's just easier than using a regular spatula. There we go more even you do it, the prettier it will look on slicing. So again, take as much time as you like. If you did use coconut, you know, you could certainly sprinkle that on the top layer or the bottom, you know, any layer, bottom layer. There we go. So again, we could put the next layer on now because look, but yeah. well, hey, let's do it. Why, why not? not? Let's I mean, do that, it. that is frozen. Hey, really. Why not? It really is. So just, we're going to do the third layer right now. And I, I'm not going to clean out my blender because it just had fruit in it and fruit and almond milk. So I'm putting in two cups of frozen organic blueberries. I'm using the wild blueberries because I like them. One ripe banana. And once again, half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. You could have it made yourself with a couple of the recipes in unprocessed.
layer number three. Look at this, guys. If this isn't a reason to get a high-powered blender, nothing is. So now we are going to put that on top. It's a blueberry layer on top of our pineapple layer, which is on top of our cherry layer. Oh, look at wow. that. Wow. Is that beautiful? And who needs sugar when you can have no, this? No. Okay, okay, there's a there's big analogy. hunk of banana, which... You know what? I want to see. I might have to just add a little bit more. A little more liquid. Almond milk just to get that to blend. I should have probably just put more of it in to begin with, but hindsight is always 2020. When it when I was having that difficulty blending, I should have known, but I, the almond milk was over. got splattered with a little bit of blueberry but that's okay because my chef coat is purple yeah. there we go so you can see the almond milk made this a little bit thinner that's okay we needed to get it out of the blender oh once again that giant piece of banana he doesn't want well to that's going to gustavo so that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's his learn. piece well that happens because it's okay you know we could always put it back and we blend there we go. This is so is this the last layer? This is the third layer. We have one more layer. Oh, that one's one going to be, I wanted to do mango, but I realized I didn't have any, so it's going to be an all-banana layer, so it's going to mm. be delicious. So again, I need my offset spatula, because so, I don't want to push it too hard and get those layers disrupted, you know? If you, if you don't wait a little bit between layers, unless the layers are nice and thick, you will get a mishmash, which will taste good. But again, the idea is, is when you cut this, it's a stunning presentation right? Like of, of different layers. Some of these blueberries were left intact, but that's going to be okay. And depending on how big your pan is, spring fork cans come in many different shapes and sizes. Hearts I've seen, gigantic rectangles. You could put many layers on, it just depends. And this will keep in your freezer for a long time. I can show you when we're done the two pieces that are still left over from the last cake. So when I have a dark layer, though, you know, I want to make sure that I mm -hmm. clean up this edge because then the blue layer won't, uh, the next layer, which will be banana, which is yellow, will not show yellow. So always take the time. When I worked at the restaurant as a pastry chef, there was somebody, their job was just to plate and make sure that every plate came out perfectly. There we go. So you never, you have never had to um, add any dates. No, it's not. I mean, in my opinion, no, but it's sweet enough. But that's why I add the banana because sometimes right. people think the fruit isn't sweet enough. So, whoops, this is going back in the freezer. We'll come back soon. So we're gonna move on to the cracker part of the cheese and crackers, and I bet you the cheese is already ready by now. Oh, but first. Let's check the lasagna, our Mexican lasagna. I bet you that's ready too. We gave it an extra 15 or 20 minutes. Let's check out the oven, which I just messed up. Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, I can tell. It's ready to cut. So we're, we're gonna serve that up for you at the end. You can see the beans are starting to eke out. We'll make it look, oh yeah, nice and soft. And again, yeah, you can check with your knife that you can cut it. And anytime you do a lasagna, you need to let it rest at room temperature at least 10 minutes or it's, it'll still taste good but it'll be mushy so now what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the oven off and leave it in there until we're ready to serve it and again it doesn't look like much now but you know you can set it up with the little faux guacamole and some scallions or olives if you want but i want to move on so the cracker really i guess you could say is a chip it has one ingredient, corn, so then we don't have to worry about it being high fat from nuts or seeds or gluten free. So what these are, are these are just, this is just corn, but I make it into a round shape. I could make it into any shape, you can see it's nice and crunchy, and they're absolutely delicious. When I make them, I make a bunch because they keep forever because they're made in a dehydrator. And this is so much healthier. Oh, oh they smell I know. so good. I ate like they're, five already. They're right. so much healthier than chips that are fried in oil and salt. So there is only one ingredient. 
and that ingredient is corn. So I buy organic corn, as I mentioned, always make sure corn, soy, wheat, you buy organic. And I get these wonderful five pound bags of organic corn at Costco. And if you don't have a Costco, I'm sure you can find organic corn somewhere else or just buy organic corn and take the, the kernels off. So it only fits two and a half pounds at a time in my food processor. That's why I'm doing two and a half pounds instead of the whole five pounds I, right now. And plus, I already made some crackers so that I could show them to you. So I'm just going to cut that to make that easy. And all you do is you defrost the corn because you can't do frozen corn or you'll have a corn smoothie, which I think <laughs> might be a little weird. You put it in a food processor fitted with the S-Blade. want to stop every now and then and just scrape it down. Now you don't want to add any liquid, but you could add spices. Now the reason I'm not adding any spices, guys, is because we're going to serve it with that smoked paprika cheese, which has chipotle and smoked paprika. And so I, I want people to really taste the cracker, but if I wasn't serving it with that cheese, you could add onion fresh or onion powder. there's a few pieces of corn that didn't get pureed. That's now, don't ask me how to do this in the oven, guys, because dehydrated recipes were specifically created for the dehydrator, so I don't know how to do them in the oven. And I honestly don't think that dehydrated recipes work in the oven, at least not well, because ovens bake at high temperatures, and dehydrators basically just dry, and they just take the water out, and it doesn't, a dehydrator doesn't go above 165, whereas an oven really doesn't go below 200, and I find that ovens cook very unevenly. A dehydrator is just a fan. I have the Excalibur 9 tray, but you can get a dehydrator at Costco or Walmart, a Nesco brand, for only $40, and I think that they're great for making things like sun-dried tomatoes, which can be very expensive when tomatoes are in season, or, or drying fruits, so I love mine. I've had it for about 15 years. So that's it. Now, if I wanted to add something, I could add some chopped red onion, I could add garlic, I could add cilantro, I could add any spices, lime juice, chipotle, and I've done that, but I really just like them plain. So I could just spread this out using my offset spatula and then make like one huge cracker, and then when it dries, I could just break it up. But if you want to do it more crackery size, I just take a little scoop like this, put it down, and with my hand... I, and you might want to have your hand wet and a little water nearby, but I don't care if it's not perfect. These also could be like mini tostadas, too, uh -huh, you know? Yeah. So I just poke it down, and you want to get either parchment paper or what these little sheets are. These are called Teflex sheets. They don't come with the Excalibur. They're an additional $27 for nine sheets on Amazon. But I have had these sheets for 15 years. That's how long they last. The thing I don't like about parchment paper is because of the environment. you got to use a different piece every time, and I don't like that. So, I could, like I said, I can make these crackers as thin or as thick as I want. The thinner you make them, the faster they'll dry. And so what you do is you put them in the dehydrator. Now, I'm not a raw foodist, so I don't know if I necessarily believe that it has to be at 105 degrees or you'll lose all the nutrition because... I believe it was Dr. Clapper in his video, Digestion Made Easy, said that anytime you eat any food, your hydrochloric acid destroys all the digestive en enzymes anyway. But uh, you could certainly do it at 105. It'll take longer. I just crank it up to high, which I believe is 160. And then after an hour or two, I go back and feel it. And if it feels dry to the top, I peel it off. And then I dry it right on this screen. And if there's time, we'll come back 
because we can edit this and, and show you it, it, that exact process. But for now, we just want to get them in the dehydrator. And so I think this makes about three trays, if I'm not mistaken, depending well, depending on how thick you do it. And uh, you Those know, are big, though. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm making them. Oh, I could make them smaller, but yeah. you know what happened is I can't find my small scoop. <laughs> but you're right; these are very big. These are very big crackers, and you know you could you could you could spread it out and then just cut it into triangle shapes if you want, you know, it, before it completely dries. But I'm just mm. trying to do it easy. Maybe I'll do the next one. Um, I'll tell you what; I'll show you the next one, not not in circles. What I'll do is, and again, I got nine of them on this one, nine of these gigantic ones. And so what I can do before I put it in the dehydrator for this one, I'm just going to spread it out on the Teflex sheet. Once again, I'm always looking for that wonderful offset spatula, if I can find it. Oh, anybody know where I went? There it is. Okay. And then I spread it out nice and thin. You could sprinkle stuff on this, you know, Benson's Cable Tasty right. if you want, but mm. it's just it's just so easy. and. You know, they used to sell baked corn chips at Whole Foods. It was a brand called Lorena, and the company, unfortunately, went out of business. And uh, so, you know, I love not having to turn my oven on. When I turn my actual oven on, it makes my apartment so hot, whereas the dehydrator doesn't. So what I can do is, you see, I could just shape this however I want into this giant square. And as it starts to dry, I could score it, you know? I can't mm -hmm. do that right now because it's still too wet, but right. I can make triangles. I can do whatever I want. So I'm just going to spread this out because I like it thin. I like it very yeah, thin. It tastes so. better thin to me. So I'm going to take another tray and do this. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you how we played up the okay. uh, cheese and crackers and maybe even get a Gustavo to mm -hmm. taste it or test it. Yeah. There we go. So now I'm going to put the chips or crackers in my dehydrator. And... You can use this dehydrator, but I never use the top tray because I lost the <laughs> Teflex and the screen, but also because it just gives it a more circulation. If you wonder what else is in the dehydrator, it's some very special recipe that if you want to learn, you'll need to sign up for my master pastry class recipe. It's a coconut pecan shortbread cookie. Yum, yum, yum. So we're going to leave that dehydrate, and it could take anywhere from, you know, four to eight hours dehydration time, depend on how big your dehydrator is, how full it is, the ambient room temperature. So it'll probably be ready less than eight hours, but in about two hours, I'm going to feel that the top two to four hours is nice and dry. Then I'm going to flip it, taking off the Teflex and letting it dry in the screen. It will then dry even faster. A dehydration tip that I want to share with you is I do not dehydrate anything with onion and garlic in my dehydrator because I'm using it so much for desserts that I don't want that smell to, to latch on. But corn is fine, so I can dehydrate savory with sweet, but I personally don't do onion and garlic ever, and that's, I think, why it's lasted for almost 15 years. So let me show you the final layer of the four-layer ice cream cake. So, excuse okay. me. No, let, let, let me move there. So I'm really excited. We're going to do the fourth layer of the four-layer ice cream cake, and I think it's been less than an hour. It's, yeah, it's been freezing yeah. really fast because I've been making it really thick. You know, a lot of times I'll post photographs of my food on Facebook and Instagram and you guys ask for the recipes. I just have an iPhone. There's no documents on it, so I can't really attach. This is why I like to do these webinars so you can see how I make it because, you know, I think it's better than having the recipe personally to actually see it being made. So I have three ripe bananas in there that have been frozen and then I'm going to add as little milk as I can to get it to blend. Again, the champion juice would have been great, but it's in the closet, and it's just yeah. too lazy to walk there to do it. But not everybody has a champion. I think more people probably have Vitamix. Both wonderful machines. <laughs> when you get that vortex that means it's it's, it's all blended and 
if you think this is an amazing texture, wait till you try the Champion because it's even thicker mm. and more realistic. Wow. So, last layer of the beautiful four layer cake. This is all banana. I was going to make it mango, but I didn't have any. And, oh boy, oh, oh yum, uh, yum, yum. Who says kids won't eat healthy like, food? Like it looks cream, just like some kind of so delicious. Cream. And sometimes I put vanilla powder a little bit, just a tiny bit mm -hmm. to make it more like a vanilla bean banana. I didn't do that, but you certainly could. A half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon. Oh, boy. Don't you want to just eat this right I now? I know, I do. Um, so when I had it at Darshana's house, she had, I believe, a raspberry strawberry layer that was delicious. You know, sometimes raspberries are just a little bit tart, so you might want to always think about adding a banana to the layers if, if the fruit is too tart for you. There we go. Go. Wow, it's going to be amazing and beautiful. And again, how much fruit you use is depending on how high and how big your springform pan is. I believe this is an 8-inch one, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. So I haven't decided if the cherry layer is the top or the banana layer is the top, but I could change my mind once I plate it. Uh, Darshana dressed it with fruit and flowers, which was delicious, but I think I might just sprinkle a little bit of coconut on top, mm -hmm. just as a decoration. If you did use chocolate, you could put some cocoa powder or cacao powder in the chocolate. Well, I don't know, does chocolate and fruit go? I guess it does. Oh. You can certainly do that. That would be very good if you like to do that. The other thing you could do is certainly mix any flavors you want or even stir in a few, little bit of fruit there we go the reason i'm going to put some coconut on top is just to kind of give it you know get the smoothness now texture. coconut is very high fat it's not something i generally use you can buy defatted coconut but i just thought that this would look you know a little bit it's pretty. just a little sprinkle little, little sprinkle little decoration if you do nuts you could probably just chop nuts on top and again i'm probably not even doing a whole half a cup because I actually need this for an upcoming recipe, but this is unsweetened coconut. You can get coconut that's like 30 or 40 percent reduced fat. Um, I think it tastes pretty good. I don't know, but uh, you know, there it is. Just a garnish. There mm -hmm. we go. Very, very pretty. So we're going to show you what this looks like very well, soon and how done. to take it out. But in the meantime, wow, this is mm. beautiful. And will that be for your birthday party? Yeah, Gustavo came for yes. my birthday. We're having a birthday We're party. We're having a birthday well, party. The cheese is ready. It was ready a long time ago, but we were just so busy, we didn't have time to show you. So what I'm going to do now is take a knife, that it does not have a beveled edge. And you can see this one had less in it. Look how easy this pops out, you guys. Oh, Look at this. Wow. But this is so thick, I'm going to just be very careful. Don't try this at home. No. Cut this in half. Look at that. Oh, wow. Huh. And then you put it on. And people, and that's, Gustavo, that's one of the reasons I did make the cracker big. Is because so I wanted, the, I wanted right. the cheese to fit on top. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. Isn't this beautiful? Thank you, Anya, for this wonderful recipe and for allowing me to make it. So, you know, slice it as thin as you can. That Look at that. Oh, you could probably get three or four slices or just get molds, different molds. Look uh -huh. at that. So we'll serve this tomorrow at my party. Mm. But, you know, and if you wanted, you could just put a little, get a little smoked paprika on top. Wait, people know it's going to be smoky. Or you could put a little slice of an olive or something. Like Absolutely, that. why Whatever. not? Yeah. So, uh, let's just see how that would look with just a little. There we go. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Okay, so gorgeous. Who wants the first taste? And of course, mm. this cheese will melt and this cheese will shred. So oh, wow. it's brilliant. That is. That so is look at this, guys, for your company. Wow, cheese and crackers. Oops. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. Mm. So now I'm going to plate up the lasagna, the Mexican lasagna, from my book on process, because Gustavo is on Dallas time and he is hungry. Oh, this looks beautiful. And like a woman, a lasagna only gets better as it ages. So, let's get him a nice big center cut. Wow, this is gorgeous. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. This came out beautiful and perfect. 
but let's garnish it with some of my sweet pea guacamole from my book Unprocessed. I believe it's page 86, just to give it a little color and pizzazz. And a few scallions on top. Does that not look amazing? I wish, mm. oh, I wish there was smell of vision. Mm. Yes. Would you like to try well, it? I will, oh, I would will, I like uh, to try it? You know, oh, yes. You're, you're from the, you know, you mm. love Tex Mex, mm -hmm. and that's what I can hold that for you. Let's and, put it here. All right. Like that. We do so, have and, a light. And we can actually show him, we, you, we can show you tasting the cheese and crackers too, if you like. Mm. Yes, and that's the that's the oh, yeah. ring of no, light. No, no, that's not a light. You see, guys, I'm an angel. <laughs> She's and an that, angel. I'm an angel, and that's my halo. So, so okay. first recipe I ever created when I was about 13 years this old. This is so great. Mm. And it's so easy, so easy. Are the noodles cooked? We had to they cook are. it a little longer, but uh, mm. it's delicious. Oh, the combination so of I bet, flavors. I bet the McDougals would like this. I really do. Oh, it's they such would. an easy recipe, mm. guys. And you know what unprocessed is, in my opinion, is just eating food from nature, food that's from a plant instead of manufactured yeah. a plant. And I really don't use anything from a can, a box, a bottle, or a bag. I did a couple of exceptions today for convenience, the noodles and the refried beans. But all these things, there are substitutes or you can make yourself. So, you know, the closer you eat to nature, the healthier you'll be. And you know, it's delicious. I, I never it? thought it would come out this way. Really? And, and how he, how it he, he's an Aquarius. He's the same sign as Abe Lincoln, which means mm. you know he's telling the truth. I, yeah, I, I can't He lie. cannot tell a lie. I can't. I, anyway. And he was hungry now, so. Mm, I'm starving. He did okay. taste the cheese and cracker, though. Just and we're so going to know. see a movie later. Yep. <laughs> so we'll we'll come back and we'll plate everything and just show you what it looks like and do like Okay, well, you guys spread. have to try now. Yes. Okay, see you later. Okay. So we're ready to plate everything up. I'll be honest, we ate some of it already, but we're ready to plate it up to show you. So what we made today was a recipe from my book Unprocessed called the Mexican Lasagna on page 106. And we topped it with some sweet pea guacamole from page 86. And the salsa is from the book Unprocessed, the Pico de Gallo from page 149. And the fellas ate it and they thought it was absolutely it delicious, is which it is. Delicious. And I was about 13 when I came up with this recipe. Wow. So now we have our smoked artichokes. I've left it in the pressure cooker just to get the flavors even more infused. I turned it off so it wouldn't keep cooking, but it's still warm. I really recommend the eight quart if you don't have an instant pot. And don't forget, there's these little things on both sides where you can put the cover so it doesn't get burned in the oven. And so, oh, can you smell this, Gustavo? Mm. Wow, it's got like, uh, I guess we have a theme. Maybe oh, because yeah. smoked paprika is my favorite spice. It, I think it is. Oh, delicious. <laughs> So we'll just put these in there, and this, if this is not a reason to get a four-quart instant, uh, excuse me, an eight-quart instant pot so that you can do That's the one four I artichokes at once, and look at these are jumbo artichokes. I can't even get them in the, I can't even fit them all in the bowl. <laughs> we'll just put three. So we'll put three there because there's three of us here. And now for the pièce de résistance, which is French for, I think it means piece of resistance, but okay. we have our four-layer ice cream cake. Now I want to take it out for you, but I also want to show you the one that I made a little while ago because it keeps really great in the freezer. So before I take this out, I'll just show you one that I made a few weeks ago. We have only two pieces left, it's yeah. any surprise. But you can see how beautiful this looks when you cut it. This oh, is this yes. are these four distinct layers, and here's an even bigger piece. Look at this. Ah, <gasps> if only I could make this right now, but I can't because we're filming. So the great thing about a spring form pan many of these are metal. I just love the silicone one. I got it on Amazon. I just take this little clip off and guys look at that. Look at the unraveling. Look at how beautiful this looks. Now let me find my spatula. Wipe off. Oh we forgot to talk about the cheese and crackers we made. Oh that's show right. Those that's right. I, while I'm taking the cleaning so, the spatula. So while she's cleaning the spatula here are the this was from the I Cass's recipe, Cooking with Plants. Mm -hmm. So with now I'm just going to take my spatula, transfer it. Hopefully it's set enough. You don't want to rush things, guys. Listen, the bottom layer isn't quite gelled. So I don't want to risk it by cutting it. I mean by, by transferring it. But I am going to take a chance and cut it because Gustavo is 
telling I'm me he wants a piece. I'm dying to have a piece. Wow, look at that. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. So it, the bottom layer was the most liquid layer, and it wasn't quite set. So I'm just going to pop it back in the freezer. But in the meantime, I'm going to give Gustavo Ooh. his piece. Will oh, you yeah. look at that? Is that not beautiful? Thank you so much, Chef Darshana Thacker, for this recipe. It's just fruit. The whole fruit mm, and nothing but the fruit. Yeah. Okay, so, so, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these webinars, we have many more on the webinar page of my website, eatonprocess.com. Most of them are free. Some of them do have a small fee because it takes us all day to do oh, this. Oh, gosh, it does. So we have some really good ones coming up. We have a master class. So in other words, I was a pastry chef for five years, an executive pastry chef at Sante Restaurant on La Brea, and I did not use sugar. Oh, you want a fork now. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you three of the desserts that that I made for my celebrity clientele that I still make, that I charge literally $75 for a dessert. I'm going to show you the German chocolate cake and really how to do it. I'm going to show you the frozen peanut butter chocolate cheesecake, which a lot of celebrities still buy from me, and a pie you've never heard of. It's the Frango Mint Pie. It was my all-time favorite dessert when I ate dessert, and there might even be a bonus recipe. Mm. So if you are interested in baking, this is not UWL. This is not Ultimate Weight Loss stuff, but this is whole plant food without oil and sugar and salt, at least without refined sugar. We are going to use dates. This might be the class for you. It's a master pastry class. And then we're going to do another uh, webinar yeah. with a small fee because there's going to be a whole slew of recipes, like two of the recipes that won me Iron Chef titles. One was judged by Dr. Goldhammer and Mary McDougall, so I named it the McDougall Goldhammer Cauliflower Risotto Potato Stack, Sweet Potato Stack. You're going to learn that one. And then the dessert recipe that Mary McDougall also judged. We don't have a name for it yet. Hopefully by the time we shoot that, we will, but it's a delicious recipe, again, based on potatoes, sweet potatoes. We've got two amazing salad dressings. I know that's a missing for everyone, really delicious ones that are oil-free, sugar-free, salt-free. So I've got my new barefoot salad dressing. It's called that because everybody that's tasted it says it's knocking their socks off. We've got a strawberry fiesta salad dressing. We've got a great mm -hmm. smoky butternut uh, squash soup. That It's a bisque, actually. We're going to serve at my birthday party this weekend. And, oh, pumpkin pie bites. So, and that's just to start it off. Nice. So, thanks for watching. Very Make sure good. you sign up for my mailing list at eatingprocess.com. And every Wednesday, I do a free one-hour broadcast call. Weight Loss Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific time where you can ask me questions. So and this is great. It's, it's good, isn't mm. it? I know I want a piece right now. Mm. So thank you so much. Okay. We'll Bye. see you soon. Bye-bye.